Well, for most of his life, uh, Franklin had traditional Christian inquirers, especially family and friends, who asked him about the state of his beliefs and the state of his soul. Among the most consistent of those inquirers, as we have seen, were Jane Mecom, his sister, and uh, George Whitfield. In the last few weeks of Franklin's life, though, uh, one more inquirer came on the stage. Franklin had known Yale College President Ezra Stiles ever since Yale granted Franklin an honorary master's degree in 1753 in honor of Franklin's electrical experiments. Stiles, a Congregationalist minister and broad-minded Calvinist, realized that Franklin was near death. Quote, you have merited and received all the honors of the Republic of Letters and are going to a world where all sublunary glories will be lost in the glories of immortality, Stiles wrote him. But Stiles paused. Would it be impertinent of him to ask about his belief in Christ? Quote, as much as I know of Dr. Franklin, Stiles confessed, I have not an idea of his religious sentiments. I wish to know the opinion of my venerable friend concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Stiles adored Franklin, but he still wished Franklin would have clear title to, quote, that happy immortality which I believe Jesus alone has purchased for the virtuous and truly good of every religious denomination. Franklin respected Ezra Stiles, so five weeks before his death, five weeks before his death, Franklin penned a response, which he asked Stiles to keep confidential. Uh, apparently he didn't, because we're here talking about it. <laughs> um, I'm sure glad we have it. Uh, quote, you desire to know something of my religion. It is the first time I have been questioned upon it, Franklin wrote. Well, that's not true. I don't know why Franklin said that, because um, his parents, Jane Mecom, George Whitfield, others, had been asking him about it all his life. Anyway, he said, I do not take your curiosity amiss and shall endeavor in a few words to gratify it, he wrote. Here is my creed. I believe in one God, creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that he ought to be worshipped, that the most acceptable service we can render to him is doing good to his other children, that the soul of man is immortal and will be treated with justice in another life, respecting its conduct in this. So at the end of his life, Franklin was a providentialist. He was a believer in the duties of worship and benevolence, and he expected God would rule in a final judgment. Then he continued, as to Jesus of Nazareth, my opinion of whom you particularly desire, I think the system of morals and his religion as he left them to us, the best the world ever saw or is likely to see, Franklin wrote. But he still had his doubts. Quote, I apprehend Christ's teachings have received various corrupting changes. And I have some doubts as to his divinity. Though it is a question I do not dogmatize upon, having never studied it. Uh, Franklin never doubted how admirable Christ's moral teachings were. He just did not know if he could accept the New, De New Testament's doctrinal claims about Jesus. And then comes the joke. There's always a joke on the, these things. He said, he thought that it was needless to busy myself with it now when I expect soon an opportunity of knowing the truth with less trouble. So he didn't know if he could know the truth about Christ and salvation, but he knew he was going to find out soon enough. In spite of his qualms about traditional Christianity, he saw, quote, no harm, however, in its being believed. If that belief has the good consequences, it probably does, of making his doctrines, Jesus' doctrines, more respected and better observed. For Franklin, the point was never just belief, but virtuous action. I shall only add, respecting myself, he concluded his letter to Stiles, that having experienced the goodness of that being in conducting me prosperously through a long life, I have no doubt of its continuance in the next, though without the smallest conceit of meriting such goodness. God had always been good to him, and Franklin saw no reason to think that God's kindness would stop when he died. 
and die he did on April 17, 1790. And he left the enigma of his faith unresolved. But in his code of doctrinalist, moralized Christianity, he became the founding father of perhaps the most pervasive kind of spirituality in the Western world today. 